So this is going to be fun, guys. Steve Graber, the guy who built my big 3D printer, he's going to come over in a few minutes. He's going to help me finish wiring up and calibrating the new extruder I just installed. So this is going to be fun. You know, do you want to like take the whole thing off and rotate it 30 degrees? I, I, I don't know. Just, you know, double check my work before we get too carried away here. I like it like this because you can stand here and just pull this forward. That's, what I, that's what I thought, yeah. That's the best. Yeah, that's what I yeah, thought. Absolutely. Now, the, the, you know, the, the Bowden only goes into like right there. There is no Bowden down there. So there's no tube, there's there, no... There's no tube. This would not fit inside that... What was in there brick. before? Didn't it, didn't it have the tube that came the whole way up no, no, from, in, no. from inside? No, no, there was, there was, no, it didn't come all the way through. It, it, it had the same little push-on connector thing yeah. right on the top of it oh. and, and just a short, tiny little tube. And that, that's that in reached there up now, inside. There's no, a no, piece of tube? No, there's no so tube. So is it just a big old hole? It's a tiny, tiny, little itty-bitty hole. Interesting. Okay, so no. it's the size of the filament. Yes. So the path is constrained the whole way down. You want to pull this off and take a quick check? I'm, check, I'm check. going to trust you because okay. actually one way we can check, 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 is to... Um, shove a piece of filament in it. Yeah, shove one down in there and see how far down it goes, right? Okay. So let's just... Uh, it's not going very far, is it? Of course, this is the first time I've ever used this kind of this extruder, so... But it is getting caught on something. Right? Well, it's probably hitting the stationary. Oh, is there filament in there? No, it's probably hitting the stationary idler, as opposed to the mm. or, you know the stationary extruder gear, as yeah. opposed to the idler. Are well, you sure? You know. Hmm. We're gonna we're gonna cut the tip of this off at an angle, and that way we can see if we're gonna get past some sort of a little ledge of some sort that might be blocking the path. Just making a little cone shape do, out of yeah. that. Do you want a light to see inside there better? Uh, not yet. And, and maybe the next step will be that. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we got that much in there. Which means we got all the way down to there. Right at the top of the hollow. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, good. It should be fine. It's real good. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay, good. Well, that's step one. Um, step two, these wires look to be fine. Uh, if we want to test the motor and the fan, we do have to bring everything up to temperature because it won't extrude unless there's temperature. I mean, I could type an M code that I don't rem remember right now. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just heat it up. And do, I think that's what we'll do. Do you want, do you want tension screw back in the hole? Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, guys. Hey. Okay. Step one is complete. What was step one? Step one was to make sure that the path for the filament was uh, pretty clear the whole way down to the hot end. And through the so, extruder. Through the extruder, yeah. Step one was to make sure Kevin didn't screw up doing anything. <laughs> and he hasn't. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> okay, I have just started the heater. So this is now heating up right here. Yes. And, uh, and then before we put any filament in, we're going to check the fan. Because we want the fan running before, okay. before we get filament in there. And I think that fan's going to be fine, because really, what we're, we're just trying to cool these fins off. Right. Yeah, it's right. the heat. Just get a little so air It doesn't melt at the top, but it no. melts at the bottom. Right. Okay. Well, this should take, um, ten, hot end, ten minutes. Hot, hot end, yeah, the hot end is quick. The bed, I started the bed about two minutes after you texted and said you were coming. It's already 55. And that's as far as it's gotten. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So tell, give us some background on what exactly is going on here, guys. Why are you doing these adjustments? Well, I personally, I think that one of the one of the drawbacks of the original design was that the extruder wasn't strong enough. So when we first started building the system, extruder technology for this size of machine didn't exist. So we just invented something, and there it was, and it worked, but it was very slow. And then now, now um, people are coming to realize that. They can print big things, and it actually is fairly useful. Um, and so people are designing commercial products, whereas we built our own from scratch. Right, right, right. right. And so when somebody builds a commercial product, obviously they're going to spend a lot of engineering time 
and resources just in that one specific part. Right. And it's improved. It's right. better than what we designed. Right. So that's what we're doing. Um, and, ideally, the machine will print faster. With and this less is a and, and better. Yeah, and better. And better, neater, cleaner. Yeah, yeah, right. with more precision. More. Right. And basically, you've installed a new extruder. A new extruder, that's right. right. And what is the extruder, Steve? Well, it, okay, so I always tell people that it's like if you had your hot glue gun and you put your stick of glue in there and you heated up the hot glue gun and then you squeeze the trigger and the trigger forces the hot glue into that little nozzle, this is the, it, identical to what's happening here, but instead of squeezing a trigger, there's a little motor with gears that right. grabs the filament and shoves it down into right. the hole. Right. And this new extruder was made by and is a what model? This is the Bond Tech QR. QR. Bond Tech QR. QR. Yes. Yeah. In the in the three millimeter size, because that's the size of filament that we use here. Okay. Cool. Thank we're, you. We're up to temperature. So let's just check our fan. Fan. Do you have a multi tester? The fan is going. If you want to, want to see it over on the side over here, it's running. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, all good. All good. Um, so, yeah, you know, I know that you just put this on, but I want to see those gears turning as I spin the spin the motor. Not like last time where they were going in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, they may be going in the opposite That's direction, me. right? So right. Do you want to just look in there real quick and, and let me know what, what you see um, when I hit extrude? I cannot tell. It's not making a good sound either. It does not appear to be turning. It's not turning. Okay, then let's just uh, we'll just stop it there. Okay. Okay. Let's just um, pull it up and go bed center. We're gonna go five millimeters above bed center. Lot, uh, Tight. Tighter, yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm going to start stepping down. Drag. There. Okay. Drag. Yep. Okay. So we're subtracting. Now, did you go back up? Uh, yeah, just a little, just a okay. 0.05 millimeters. Gotcha. Because the last time it tracked, and then when we went up and came back down, gotcha. it was. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, let's see. That, so that's 0.4 millimeters difference. Let's go back to the console. And. Six six five. So that means it's going to be H. I think I can do this math in my head. One three seven six point three five. Send. Machine control. Right center. And what's that program, Steve? Uh, well, this is actually a, a, a web server that runs on the printer. So the printer is serving me a web page that has all of this interface built into it. And the, the software is called the uh, Duet Web Control. Duet Web Control. Thank you. <coughs> That's not what we wanted. That was not what we wanted. Something changed dramatically there. And we're done. This will be fun. Steve Graber, the guy who built my big uh, 